Hello and welcome to Percussion and Pop Culture. Today we're going to talk about Fred Armisen's new comedy special available exclusively to stream on Netflix called Stand Up for Drummers. While Armisen has said that it's made up of drummer humor, it's supposed to be for everybody. And so we decided to have a panel discussion with a bunch of different people with different levels of musical education and background to talk about it to see how it hit those demographics. So that's what you're about to see. I wanted to let you know right up front that we had a couple audio issues and a couple camera issues, so it's a little wonky at times, but we think that it's still good enough to put out and we want you to see it. So uh, thanks for bearing with us and uh, enjoy our discussion. Thanks. Okay, so welcome to Percussion and Pop Culture. This is uh, our panel discussion that we're doing about Fred Armisen's new stand-up called Stand Up for Drummers, uh, released recently on Netflix. We decided this would be a really great opportunity to talk to a bunch of different people uh, about it. Armisen himself said he wanted to make it, you know, stand-up that was about drumming and about drummers, but was relatable to uh, everybody. And so we decided to have a, a panel of uh, many, uh, you know, people of different varying backgrounds, uh, you know, in relation to that. So, um, I am, uh, a, uh, you know, formerly college educated, you know, percussionist, um, Ken here, who has been on uh, percussion pop culture before when we, uh, when we saw, uh, Time Stand Still, the, uh, uh, Rush documentary. Um, hey Ken. Hello. We would call it like our, our journeyman uh, percussionist, I guess would be. Yeah. Or, yeah, something along yeah, those lines. Um, Alyssa next to me is uh, a, uh, you know, uh, college educated, she's a band director, college educated musician, but not a drummer, um, an oboist. Uh, you know, st standard joke, we won't hold that against you. Ha ha. Oh. Um, we were going to have uh, a non-drumming uh, musician uh, uh, journeyman as well, uh, though uh, we're uh, currently under you know a snow apocalypse here, and and uh, they they could not make it out. It would have been really interesting too because uh, he's uh, uh, a comedian as well, so it would have been interesting to hear both sides of that. And uh, Katie uh, is just not a musician, right? And so we've got yeah, and so that's why I actually want to come to you first is. You know, what did you think of it? Did it, you know, for being not a drummer, did it did it hit? Was it funny? Did you enjoy it? What are your thoughts? Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, probably about a quarter of it was over my head, but it was really fun. Do you think there were music jokes that hit for non-musicians? I thought it was good, like the little bits of uh, kind of the relationship in a band, the back and forth. Like, I mm -hmm. could totally kind of see that. Right. Ken, okay, what did you think? I liked it. Um, I thought it was funny. There was a lot of, uh, like, at a band practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of those kind of things kind of happened. And, uh, I thought there was there would be a little more, like, drumming. I was kind of, I didn't know how he'd make a whole special, like, drumming, you know, just make it funny. But, yeah, there was enough in there that, like, as a drummer, I, I thought it was pretty funny and as a whole, it was good. I enjoyed it. There was a, there was a lot of good laughing in there. I thought it was interesting too that there was a little bit of a mix of non-drumming jokes just kind of thrown in there too. But um, I actually thought that the stuff about the relationship between the inmates, that was very foreign to me and it didn't hit me very well at all because I don't sit in my school band and go, you know those kids from the other school are doing this and <laughs> aren't they awful? Like we don't do that. Man, the gym socks, I, I don't get it. They just, they're not good. I don't know if you guys felt this or not, but it felt very much that a lot of things didn't go anywhere. They were like non sequitur jokes. Yeah. And I don't know if that's part of his style or not. Like, I'm going to tell a joke and kind of make you feel awkward about it and then move on to something else. But it felt like a without lot... Without transition. Without Just transition. Yeah. 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 And I'm so used to that modern style of comedy where, like, it might not even be a, you know... Sometimes you watch comedy and you're not sure if it's a jokes or just a story. Sometimes you're not sure if it's funny anymore, right? Just you're, a rant. you're watching a story or, or just a, just a storyteller too. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes it's, it can be a rant, but sometimes it's like really deep. And I thought that's where he was going. There was actually a moment where he went into, um, it was probably the part, I don't say it's my favorite part or it certainly wasn't the funniest part, but where he was talking about, um, how John Waters saved his life. John Waters saved my life. Again, that's where I started to at least very much feel comfortable 
with what I was seeing. I felt settled in, like this is gonna go somewhere. And then they jump someplace else. Right? I really wanted to see John Waters come off and like play. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, like totally. I know I know he's getting up there, but like I don't know if he plays drums, but <laughs> right. that would be awesome to see him yeah. like yeah. play. Uh-huh. Right. Guess. Yeah. Mustache plays drums. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Totally. And the part just the history of drum sets mm-hmm. was wildly interesting. Not funny. But yeah, very yeah. interesting. There's also something called a low boy. There's like a little hi hat down here. Before they could really, before they figured out to sort of hit them, it's just down here. Well, I felt going through the history thing too that like I didn't think he said anything that was wrong, but at the same time, every time he said something, I thought, what about this genre or what about this yeah. approach? And especially there, like I thought he made a good point about the kids got. He does this thing where he says the kids got bigger, but you know the music got quieter. And that's certainly true in X amount of things. If you want to talk about, like, the Laurel Canyon, like, Eagles acoustic rock sound. Yeah. Yeah. But Zeppelin's going on at the same time, and that's all, you know, in, like, you know, Deep Purple, and, like, just, there's a lot of 70s rock bands that were all about being big and loud. Is there hard rock in the 70s? <laughs> <laughs> you know? What? <laughs> that, that's the first thing I thought. I was like, yeah, there's definitely, like, mellow stuff, but... 70s is about like as loud and uh-huh. you know the 80s definitely toned it down aside from you know hair metal and stuff mm-hmm. but like that i thought was kind of cool when he like had the simmons pads and stuff mm-hmm. um yeah i thought with like, the 70s it was it smelled a little too much talking about like the quietness of it they're like bigger kit but softer music and there are people that do that there are people that do the, the history of drum set by taking around vintage drums. Uh, I know that Daniel Glass does that. I know that musician Milk Had Drew, he, he does that type of stuff. So that's a, you know, um, that's a thing that, that exists and people do. And it was interesting to, to hear his take on it. And I, I was kind of expecting it to be more, there were, there were jokes in there, but they were so subtle and so drum directed that it was kind of, it was kind of an extension of the impressions he did. Yeah. Like, I'm now I'm impersonating a genre of drummers, you know? Yeah. What did you think was the funniest joke? I remember having a moment of explosive laughter, but I can't remember what it yeah, what I'm the joke was. Yeah, I remember what that was, too. I, I think I know what it was, and I'm glad, glad I filmed us uh, watching it. Um, was it the decomposing fox? <laughs> <laughs> Right. And his impressions yeah. of the different dialects also was very cool, like going mm-hmm. through the United States. The little quick impressions he did of the drummers, like, they weren't bad. I was kind of surprised, like, I I was, like, when he said Stuart Copeland, I'm like, well, what is he going to do? And then when he did, I'm like, oh yeah, it does kind of look like Stuart mm-hmm. Copeland. Those were, those were funny, but like, that's something that a drummer would, would notice. Right. Well, Over my head. did, when he did the first one, did you go, well, yeah, we all we all do Ringo that way. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. And except, then, except he didn't he didn't throw a stick around like this. He, he did, yeah, he didn't do the, yeah. Th- that's all. That's always in my Ringo impression. Uh-huh. Like, yep, that, that's the Ringo impression. It's like, ha, ah, I'm Stevie Wonder. Right? You know? <laughs> like, but then he went on to the others, and like, that does look like Keith Moon. That's yeah. funny. It's, it's like hold, the way he's holding the stick and like kind of leaning forward. Like, like over the top yeah. of the drums? Yeah. 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 It does look like Keith Moon. Even, uh, what's his face from uh, U2? I can't remember. Larry Mullen. Yeah. yeah, I never thought about like, what Larry Mullen looks never, like. Yeah, I yeah. never thought of his look as a drummer. And then when he did it, I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah it's, totally. It looks like him. Yeah. Larry Mullen from U2, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> the decomposing Fox was hilarious. But it was definitely one of those moments where I was watching the trailer for this, and that joke was in the trailer, and I'm like, I think I might be watching the best joke in the thing. Yeah, like in, in a trailer, that seems odd because that's it's definitely strong. And if you're if you're pitching it for like, four drummers, mm-hmm. you know, decomposing the fox. Right. I think that's very purposely because they were trying to show that there might be some yeah, funny in there. That's if true. It's, mm-hmm. Was the thing at the end a joke where they all played together, but they all just played a beat? I don't know. I thought that was strange. Yeah, I, I really didn't know because it was real basic and, you know, it's like good drummers up there and I, I didn't really... I was so thankful when it wasn't like a big jam, to tell you the truth. That's why I'm wondering if it's a joke. That's something I said about uh, 
hired gun when, when I did a review of that of, of that movie. It's like, I totally didn't want all the jamming scenes. Like, the, the jamming scenes were just, yeah, we know you're good musicians. You don't have to play another blues tune, you know? I felt like his blues joke. 20 seconds. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna... About that, <laughs> yeah. that was funny. <laughs> it did kind of feel like it abruptly ended, though. Yeah. Which is a little weird. Yeah. I, I kept feeling like things were cut out. Like, there's a joke, and then we cut, you know, and then he does something else, and, like, it didn't have this, like, flowing style. It, it Even within the way that it was made, it had this very, like, here's a thing, here's a thing, here's a thing, here's a thing. Yeah, that, that's one thing I noticed, too. It was very, like... This part, then this part, then this part, then this part. There was nothing really linking it. And when it did kind of... There were times where it did seem like it kind of was rolling along and then it would just stop and it would go into the next thing. Mm-hmm. As we start to get ready to wrap up, any, anything else anyone wants to say about it? I couldn't figure out who the audience was intended to be. If this was comedy for me or if it was comedy for somebody else. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think it felt universal in any way. There were some parts of it that probably isolated some people. But there were definitely parts that were probably universally funny. So mm-hmm. that was an interesting. I just and in a yeah. room full of drummers, and the way he was talking about drumming, sometimes felt like it was directed at them, and sometimes felt like it was directed at people like me, who only know drummers from having seen drummers. Right. So I think something telling. And this one's in the trailer as well. Was the you made a film of my life and drumming would be this, and he takes the the wing nut off the top and he drops it. I think if we took a film of my experience as a drummer, it would not be on stage, it would be this business, and then <laughs> that. <laughs> right, it's like, yeah, like, and I think that felt like a universal joke to me. I, I hope he like, like, here's a mundane task that I, you know, messed up, right, mm-hmm. you know, in, in that way. And it's probably happened to every drummer. Right, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, and or like, you know, who isn't, you know, Oh, I gotta write something. Oh, I dropped my pencil. Right? You yeah. know? You know? So, um, I thought it would be more of that. Because you're right, it was very... There were times that it didn't feel like it necessarily found its audience. Um, that being said, would would you recommend it? Well, I think so. It was entertaining. I, I Again, it would probably depend on who I was talking to. Mm-hmm. You know, if it was... My percussionist students, they might really find that entertaining. If it was my mom, she might not so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would I would recommend it. I thought it was funny. Um and as as a drummer, one of the parts that was more fun was just like seeing who you could pick out in the crowd. Like right. the famous guys. Like you you caught a lot more than I did. <laughs> But I'm like, oh yeah, that is Mike Gordon. I was hoping you'd call him up. I was, yeah, like, they, they showed awesome. him so prominently yeah, that it was like, times. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's funny though, what you were saying about how it seemed like he went back and forth. Mm-hmm. And it totally did seem like when he would ramble, it would be in between those. Like he had to ramp the crowd back up. Right, so, right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just in um, his audience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you recommend it? Yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, those are our thoughts on um, Fred Armisen's Stand Up for Drummers. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Oh, the other thing is, um, so like I said, we you know we're missing this one group, which is people who are musicians uh, that aren't drummers. We didn't really you know uh, didn't have like the you know the, the journeyman musicians, the you know that are out there playing. Um, you know, comment, please. We want to hear from you. We'd love to, you know, continue this conversation in the comments. And just in general, you know, what did you think of this this uh, stand-up? Would you recommend it? Did you like it? Did you agree with us that it, it was kind of stilted and, and, and disjointed? Or, you know, what do you think? So, um, please let us know in the comments. Uh, you can send us a tweet, at Musicians Notes. Uh, other than that, uh, um, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. All right, let's hit it.